Um, Great. So, um, yes, so thank you then, Andrea, for, for that. And um, uh, I'm going to get straight in then to um, the, the piece of work that we've been involved with um, specifically here around looking at networks. Um, the, as Andrea mentioned, then, of course, we've been focusing on the Food for Life Get Togethers program. And um, we, there are a number of components to the program. And one of the significant elements of it is has been concerned with mobilizing um, networks of, uh, of, of people and groups and organizations that um, could contribute towards a good food movement. Um, and so this fits into then a, a, a series of um, evaluative pieces that we've been involved with. Um, and um, so they, they are in the public domain, so you can find those if you wanted to find out more of them. But the, the bit that I'm talking about at the bottom right here is concerned with strengthening networks for community-based action on good food. Um, what did we intend to do? So um, when we, oops, sorry, there we go. Um, Essentially, then, the aim of our piece of evaluative research was concerned with exploring network building from the perspective of different stakeholders. And this has involved us getting into putting the, the, net, the get togethers work in the context of other approaches um, to create similar kinds of networks. Um, we wanted to know what motivated people to take part in networking activities. And we've been interested to know whether participants obtained a sense of belonging to a, a wider movement for good food as part of their engagement. So there's a very interesting set of literature out there around networks and um, I, I won't pretend to say that we can talk about it all, but um, just to give you a, a bit of a flavour, um, that there's, there's lots of work thinking about what, what we mean by networks, what networks might have to offer, um, how they can create impacts, and what good practice looks like um, when it comes to running a network. Um, I suppose one reason why networks can be seen to be so important for um, particularly nonprofit organizations, voluntary sector and so forth, is that they're often thought to offer a, a resource efficient route to, to harness connections. Um, and networks also pull together resources. Um, and of course, in the context of obtaining a health, healthy and sustainable food system transition, networks might be the route to bring together stakeholders who, who can work at different levels and within different niches within their fields of specialism, from very small local projects to those engaged at the national level, who can all somehow in turn scale up their learning, their ambition, um, their resources. While there's lots of research around networks in general, general um, our review indicates that there's a, a great deal we don't know about community food networks. Um, even if there are some useful crossovers with other studies um, uh, around things like the role of um, local partnerships. So there's, there's, there's work around partnerships, um, and Sarah and I did a work, piece of work earlier this year around sustainable food places and their local food partnerships. But partnerships and networks, there's an overlap of interest there, but there is a, um, quite a degree of difference as well. Just to give you a, a quick then flavor of some interesting things that you'll find if, if you dig into the theory and the literature and the practice is um, there's a lot of work about what do networks look like? Um, and um, a useful starting point is, is that there are many types of networks um, and they can be placed upon a continuum. Um, as this diagram illustrates, uh, at one end networks can be 
very informal, loosely bound together groups of people who, who interact in very kind of autonomous ways, while at the other end, a network can be quite formal and tightly bound. Um, and so the actors are bound together into some kind of um, uh, very institutional set of roles. Um, and of course, there are horses for courses. Um, different kind of network types are suited to different kinds of situations. Um, depends upon the goals, the resources available, the values of, of the participants within groups. Um, so it's not the case that you no know, one type of network is either good or bad. It's just they're, they're different for, for different circumstances. They they do change over time is, is an interesting feature. And um, there, there, there's a lot of literature about the value of networks in amplifying efforts to create social change. Um, a theme from the literature is the subject of what are some of the features that tend to make a network effective. Uh, and of course, it, it helps for a network of actors to have a, a common and a shared purpose, or at least for the actors to share an interest in developing that purpose. Um, a link to this is, is the matter of who makes up the networks. Networks can be made up of very diverse actors. Indeed, diversity can often strengthen a network and that's really important. But it helps if there is an understanding amongst the members about the makeup of that network, um, that there is some interest in understanding you know, who's part of the network and, and what those interests might look like. Um, then it helps to know how and who is organizing the network. Um, who's running this thing? Um, if there is any parties running the thing um, and that there's trust, openness and a degree of transparency about the development of that network, how decisions are made about how the network evolves. Uh, and, and finally, it seems to help when a network in some way stands out as offering something distinctive from all the other potential networks that an actor might be part of. Um, and that's what we mean by the value proposition of a network. What, what's it got that can, can deliver something for people that other networks can't do? What's its, what's its thing that it brings? And, and finally, another theme from the literature um, is, is really at a very human level, um, an interesting feature from nearly all net studies of networks concerns, concerns who takes an active role in really moving a network forwards. Um, who's, who's kind of helping build momentum, driving the change, keeping people involved, um, bringing new people in, um, getting the ball over the line in terms of sort of creating impacts. Um, and, and one of the big themes in all of this is that almost always it's, it's, a, it's a small fraction of actors within a, often a very big network who are doing a lot of this kind of um, uh, pivotal work in making things happen. Um, and, and the work of someone like Malcolm Gladwell um, is, is puts an interesting sort of reflection on that, that um, in, in his work around um, studies of, of how change occurs within systems, um, you often find that there are individuals who have, um, who take on certain kinds of roles. Um, and and in, in his model, he, he talks about, you know, you, you have so-called connectors, you know, people who've got a, a real gift in bringing together people. Um, you have mavens who are great at accumulating knowledge and, and sharing know-how on how to do things. And that know-how is in, is in the very broadest sense. Um, and, you, and you have salespeople, people who, who, who've got a certain charisma and can help persuade and convince. Um, so there's something interesting in, in all the many contexts in which we see 
networks um, operating, you, you often have this feature then that there's quite a small fraction who are um, creating the, the, the effects across a, a very large group of people who, who are very often dispersed and very diverse. So networks are quite sort of interesting and exciting fields for study. Um, and it, it was with this kind of literature in mind that we were thinking, well, what, what have we got to find out when we, when we look at how um, the work of uh, Food for Life Get Togethers program has been operating? So I'm, I'm gonna pass over to Sarah now um, to give us a bit of a flavor of, of what we found. Thanks, Matt. Um, I'm very conscious of time, so I'm going to do a really quick fly through the, the, some of the key findings to give us plenty of time in the, in the breakout room. Um, could you move the slide on for me, Matt? So before saying something about the findings from our research, I just wanted to say something very briefly about the Get Together's approach to networking, um, just to give you a bit of context. Many of you will be familiar with the fact that um, the programme originally was focused around um, supporting, fostering intergenerational connections through food um, in, in a variety of community settings. And then partly as a result of COVID and partly as a result of reflecting on that sort of early test and learn phase of the programme, the focus shifted towards supporting um, community-based food activities more broadly and using a range of network activities to support that. And that includes um, the, the role of the network manager. Um, there were a number of um, grant rounds based around community cooking and growing projects. Um, there have been the network events and probably a million other things that I've forgotten or haven't quite got time to mention. I'm sure it will come back in later. But just to give you a bit of a flavour of the sort of of the offering, the network offering um, that um, the, the, the programme provided. OK, if you can move us on again. Um, we have and will look at many aspects of the approach to networking, but I'm particularly gonna focus now on the, the role of the network events. And what you can see here is that the program offered uh, 14 online network events between June 21 and um, the sort of the following year, space of a year. Um, and they were on a variety of themes and were delivered by the programme's locally commissioned partners in, in partnership with, with some of their uh, key stakeholders. And of the 3,000 or so people that have registered with the Get Together programme, about a third um, have registered for, for the network events. Okay, if you could just move us on, Matt. Thank you. So, one of the things, the sort of headline findings for us was that, um, you know, there was a real hunger amongst people working um, in different aspects of community food for, for forums and a platform that enabled them to come together, share their learning, um, pick up practical tips and ideas that they could take um, directly back into their own work. Um, I think this, this group of people, they, they, they are a kind of a hidden positive force in society, often operating very much under the radar and generally um, not, not well supported. So to have this forum was very much welcomed. Um, and you can see the, the quote that we have on the screen here. This is somebody who was working in a, in a community, um, in a, sorry, in a school setting. Um, and for this individual to have um, the, the space of the network events, it kind of almost took the place of um, continuing professional development. Um, and 
like this individual used what they picked up at the events, took it back into their own setting. Um, and they were also encouraging their managers to come along to the events um, as a way to um, both pick up and, and share their learning with others. Okay, if you could move us on again, Matt. That's great. Um, and many of the people that uh, responded to our survey said that not only did they find the events um, you know, useful in, in real time, but they then went on to, to use what they'd picked up from the events to, to take action in their own setting. And that action took a variety of forms from um, using the ideas um, directly in their own work, sharing things they'd picked up with other people in their local communities, um, in some cases using it to go on to um, put in successful funding bids, um, and generally sort of amplifying um, what they had picked up um, at the event in, in their own, own work with local communities. If you move us on again, please. Great. Um, and the events had benefits for the presenters as well. So these were the, the locally commissioned partners who the, the programme engaged to develop um, their local networks, but they had a key role in delivering these national online events. And for this group, um, the key benefits were about being able to reach a, a broader audience, both locally and nationally, and being able to connect with others at a national level who were working on similar aspects of, of community food. Um, so um, the, into the network events of you know, great benefit to both participants and presenters. If you could move us on again, please, Matt. So we were also interested to find out to what extent um, the network events were helping to foster connections um, between uh, the participants. And 50% of the people who responded to our survey said that they went on after the event to um, you know, connect with people that they'd either met through the event or you know, had, had found out about as a result of attending the event. Um, quantity, not necessarily important, but um, most of the people who, who said they had gone on to make connections made between um, one and five connections with, with other uh, food groups. Um, and then so, uh, in some ways it's quite surprising that, um, you know, 13% of the respondents said that they went on to make um, 16 or more connections. And um, we don't really have the data to better understand that statistic because it would be quite fascinating to know um, you know, whether that then led on to meaningful partnerships or collaborations or what the motivations were for those people in going out um, and reaching, um, reaching out to so many other people um, who were presumably working in, a, in an area of interest um, for that participant. Okay, if you could move us on again, Matt. That's great, thank you. Um, in terms of whether participants, it, whether the network events and other networking activities helped participants to feel connected in to a broader movement or more affiliated to the broader get togethers network, the, the results were a bit more mixed. Um, I would say the impact was stronger for the locally commissioned partners. Um, and in a way, you know, that's that's what you would expect. They were much they had a much, um, you know, greater commitment to the program. They were funded to be part of the program and they were also on a regular in basis engaging with other locally commissioned partners. 
and with members of the programme team. So that sense of connection to the, the sort of broader values and aims of the programme and a responsibility to, to help further the programme aims was, was much clearer for that group. Um, for others, uh, I guess their participation was perhaps more tactical and pragmatic, so they would engage with the events or other activities um, in, a, in a very targeted way um, in order to bring back learning, ideas, inspiration uh, back into their own work. And some people engaged in a fairly sort of you know, it, the, the, the moment of connection was important, but they didn't have any, any more sort of, uh, you know, uh, a deeper sense of, uh, I guess, identification with the programme um, and its aims. Okay, just one more, and then I'll pass back to Matt. So in terms of opportunities and challenges, I think, um, you know, what, what the potential is now is to look at where, what kind of opportunities, what kind of approaches will work to um, help consolidate the network and give people reasons to um, keep coming back to the network and contribute to the network on an ongoing basis. Um, and I think, you know, building community spirit through various activities and good communications is, is part of, perhaps part of the answer there. Um, but I think one of the things that came across in the research was that people were quite hungry for um, perhaps to develop themed communities of practice and to have... Um, you know, more developed and ongoing resources around particular aspects of community, community food engagement. Okay, I think I will stop there um, and I'll hand back to Matt. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yes, yeah, so just to um, briefly pull together some of those um, points really. So a lot of unmet need demand for, for practical guidance um, and connecting with peers um, around often what are, are quite um, uh, hyper local small scale um, actions around good food. Um, so lots of potential for community food based initiatives to to gain traction to broaden and deepen their impact um, through going up and making these regional and national connections with others um, examples of you know people plowing a, a a very small furrow in or a particular furrow in, a, in one part of the country connecting with someone who's doing something really very similar in another part of the country or those um examples of um, someone doing something, come up with a, a way of working, which then gets um, national publicity through, through the network. Um, that coordinator role, network coordinator is, is pivotal in all of this process. Um, and, and that process by which what gets selected as the focus, how people are brought together, when things are hosted, how they're advertised, little things. Um, and um, uh, of course, the, the backdrop to all of this with the pandemic and the post-pandemic period is, is really in, important here. And um, th there have been some quite, um, you know, I suppose maybe momentous changes. It's a bit hard to see until we get a bit more kind of view from a distance really about um, quite what the pandemic has done in this space and whether it, it has um, uh, galvanized people to to, to um, come together in, in network activities. So um, plenty there for us to think about. Um, I'm now gonna just note that in the slides that we will share afterwards, there are some very interesting resources that we wanted to just make you aware of. So do, do have a look at those 
uh, at your leisure when you get access to them. And um, th there's a lot more in our report that that's, we didn't really talk about today. Thank you so much. Um, that was brilliant. I thought I just, um, I was just gonna do a quick reflection just, just in terms of like as the, I've only been in post since January. So some of this um, report is really reflecting on kind of the wealth and the richness of the work that came before I started. And I just wanna honor that. Um, but also just to say that for me, the just how interesting it was to sort of look at the report and think about, so we have a very open, network, right? We don't have a very strong, we have this kind of very broad remit. We don't have a strong identity. I've only ever worked on campaign sort of work before, which is very different. It's kind of a call to action or a, and so it was really interesting to me to see kind of how powerful this kind of broad open network could be and, and thinking about how that overlaps um, and kind of complements a lot of the, some of the other stuff that I know is happening. Like there's so much happening in, in, in kind of food, um, building like sort of the good food movement. And like so many of you were here and it's such a pleasure to be um, sharing this with peers and um, thinking about how how kind of, so I'm really interested in just in how kind of our work fits together, how these things complement. I think we got so many people in through the small grants program to become part of the network that we're just sort of very, like had just started doing stuff or we're thinking about doing stuff and we're not connected at all to other, to other things that were happening. And so I think in that sense, this very open, welcoming kind of no, there's no bars, you know, like that was really interesting, but thinking about, we're now thinking about like, how do we build this? How do we develop it? How do we connect them to what's going on in their local areas to other things that are happening with Soil Association and beyond kind of the bigger campaigns? So that was one big question for us. And that kind of overlaps with the question around um, the connections between sort of this kind of network development and movement building and, and movement building beyond just our own work, but kind of this bigger thing that we're all like, it's so desperately important that we transform our food systems. And so how are we doing that? How are we working together to, to build that? Um, uh, <laughs> I really like the, like the, the, I was so excited about the number of connections people were making in these network sessions. Like that was, that was amazing to me. And it sort of captures a bit of that ripple effect that we all hope we're having, but we, we can never see it. You know what I mean? Cause it's all out there. It's like they come and they go. Um, and I'm really like, I would love to know more especially those like super connectors, like who are they and what are they doing? Like that's just, some of those numbers were crazy. And I'm just really curious as to kind of what that looked like, how that worked, how much of that is actually sustainable. Um, so there's a lot there, but I thought that was really interesting to me. And then, and then just, I guess, just on a bigger level, kind of reflecting back on the, um, also the Mentimeter stuff, um, just how much of it's about relationships, even in these sort of big open things that are very brief, leading kind of connections often there's still like you're still have a relationship there um, it's about time it's about working together and building trust and all these things that our funding models don't support the way that third sector doesn't work you know because we're all here for a short time for a funded project and then maybe we're gone and then that's a big hole left and like can the network survive that how does that work how do we build more resilient sustainable networks and given the importance of, of a coordinator in place like how do we keep those positions and how do we prioritize that I think that was a big question for a lot of us um, is kind of selling. We're just getting people to understand the importance of, of like the, the role of care in in creating and supporting a network moving forward. So those are some of the questions that I was hoping we could discuss or and that came out of our group. We almost have very little time. I just wonder if there's any. Um, we have we wanted to break into small groups and then I also just know that people might have some questions or burning questions. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions we wanted to ask before we break up or if you want to save those for groups we were i was going to propose we split up into themed groups maybe and i have a poll to do that um but i want i just want to give a moment pause to see if there's anyone that has a question that's just also equally feel free to just write down your in questions chat. in the chat box and yeah. uh yeah, as they come that, yeah i thought people would do um if you did have anything and stuff but um Maybe I'll just, so the, this is the poll. Um, these are kind of the, some of the questions that came out of our discussion with the group. Um, and so I was thinking we can maybe use these to break out into smaller group discussions. So one was kind of just what key challenges or top tricks or people wanted to talk about some of the mechanics of network building. Um, the second is kind of better documenting the impact of networks and, and how like, just to show the, the, the importance of our, um, kind of what, what networks are for and, and and how we understand their, how they work. And then the last one was 
connection between networks and social movement. Um, so it's difficult to get a sense of kind of where you're, what you're most keen on talking about. Um, and then if anyone's got any other options, we can also throw that in the chat. Um, but. Oh, we'll miss you, Vera. Um, I'm glad you made it for part of it. Uh, Um, so as, as people are thinking, so the suggestion was that, so when we break up into these small groups, it'd be really great if, um, um, yeah, if, if, if we could have some discussion around these topics. Um, we don't really have facilitators for the group, so each one of us will be in each of the groups. Um, but we'd also love for, um, if you could, right, so it sounds like, it looks like we have a pretty good split across these different ones. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, so if everyone, if you could please vote because I'm actually going to use this to actually create the small groups. So if you haven't voted yet, um, please vote. And then maybe we can have an answer to Maddie's question while people are finishing. Because we've still got some people who haven't. Sarah, Matt, if you um, did we have any an answer to that one? About what was the appetite? Yeah. Was that one? I, I, I mean, again, it was a very small sample, but my feeling was that the people that we were surveying and interviewing were very much at the coalface. And, you know, their concerns were more kind of practical and focused rather than thinking about creating a movement and what could be sort of um you know driven through a kind of I guess a more sort of perhaps a political small p political focus to their work um I don't know what you you would say about that Matt and I guess Andrea you, you and others from the program team probably have something to say on that as well I think you're right Sarah that that's the preponderance of people but of course what's interesting in networks is diversity isn't it that sometimes there might be sort of one in 20 people are absolutely passionate about you know quite a political mission and they will galvanize the, the group who are you know got, got more sort of specific concerns and elevate it into a much bigger discussion so sometimes the diversity is really interesting there about people from different walks of life coming together um, even if the preponderance of people are orientated towards one kind of set of concerns. Oh, so in our last like 30 seconds of the thing, um, it'd be great. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, this is an uh, hopefully an ongoing conversation um, that we'll be continuing to have. So I'll have some more information about kind of where this conversation would be continuing um, in the follow-up to this. And we also had like a, a really short, um, really short uh sort of evaluation slash like um kind of what key questions have continued or emerging from you for you from this to continue that conversation so i'm going to put that in the chat um but if you um yeah so that it should take you just a couple minutes if it'd be great if, if you can fill that out but again we'll in, include that in the follow-up um and if anyone has like some key things that came out of those discussions that were really too short um please feel, feel free to add them in the chat that'd be amazing um I wish like it's like we decided we really could only take up an hour of people's time but like we always need more than an hour I feel so hopefully we can continue some of these conversations um, in an ongoing way uh yeah and any resources you want to share in the chat we'll also make sure those get passed along um great um and I don't know if yeah I don't know if Matt or Sarah wanted to jump in on Lopez's question as we end and as if people have a little time to hang on. Very briefly, that I, I think it is a really interesting subject to discuss based upon the, the you know, our, our group I was only just scraping the surface. Um, yeah, when, when what, what makes a social movement from a, and distinguishes from a loose network um, or, or just a group of people who are paid to be together. Um, really interesting. Um, examples and what we can learn from looking at different networks and how they operate.
Mm -hmm. oh, there's some really good stuff in here. I really wish I'd been in, able to be in all those discussions. Um, but yeah, there's an offer from Sarah. Like we've, we've been working with Sustain. Obviously, we, we do a lot of work with Sustain um, around the Food Learning Forum and the networks. There's a community of practice growing around networks. So um, we're hoping to pick some of this stuff up there. Um, so we'll, um, yeah, it'd be great if we can sort of bring those together and continue some of these conversations because they're so important. Um, yeah. There were some requests to share the links for the research um, you presented, Matt. Uh, we will put all the links together and we can distribute it later on. Yeah, and we'll, share the, we'll share the recording. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll have like a page with everything up there on it. Thanks to everything. Yes, yeah, so I think I don't want to take up too much more time for folks. So um, thanks everyone so much for coming. Um, please do fill out the type form if you can. Um, and we'll have some more information following up this. Um, with kind of more any next steps and some information about the um yeah uh, the reports and links to all the stuff that that's here uh really appreciate it. love seeing you guys um and thank you so much